Unit Three: Water, Chapter Seven: Air and Water. Important terms: Abundant, Large Amount, Trace, Small Amount, Fossil, Remains of Plants and Animals. Inflate, to expand or increase in size. Deflate, to decrease in size. Impurities, impure substances. Turbid, muddy. Solute, a substance that gets dissolved in water. Air is present everywhere, but we cannot see or smell it. Its presence can only be felt. What is in the air? The most abundant gases found in our atmosphere are nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen makes up around 78% of the total atmosphere, while oxygen makes up 21%. The remaining 1% is made up mostly of a gas called argon. There are trace amounts of other gases such as methane, hydrogen, helium, neon, krypton, carbon dioxide, and a form of oxygen known as ozone. Oxygen. Oxygen is added to our atmosphere by plants during the process of photosynthesis when they convert sunlight into energy. Oxygen is most important for breathing and for staying alive. Oxygen is also essential for burning. Activity Oxygen is needed for burning. Place two burning candles on the table. Place an inverted glass over one of the lighted candles. Flame of the candle covered by the glass slowly puts off. But the flame of the other candle keeps on burning. The candle flame covered with glass is put out slowly because, for some time, the oxygen present inside the glass is used up by the flame and fresh supply is absent. However, the supply of oxygen for the second candle continues. This keeps its flame burning. This experiment proves that oxygen is needed for burning. Nitrogen Nitrogen is added into the atmosphere as plants and animals decay or are burned. It is also added through volcanic eruption. The amount of nitrogen being added to the atmosphere and the amount being removed are perfectly balanced. Nitrogen keeps the process of burning under control. All living things need nitrogen for their growth, but they cannot use it in its natural form. There are some bacteria present in the soil which convert nitrogen into a usable form. Animals get this nitrogen by eating plants. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide exists in the atmosphere naturally. Animals and human beings release carbon dioxide when they breathe out. The burning of fossil fuels also results in the addition of carbon dioxide gas. The air contains 0.03% of carbon dioxide. Plants use carbon dioxide to make their own food. It absorbs the heat sent to the earth by the sun. This makes the earth's atmosphere suitable for life to exist. Ozone Ozone is a molecule made up of three oxygen atoms. This layer of the atmosphere is very useful in saving the earth from harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. Water vapor Water vapor is also an important gas to be considered while studying the atmosphere. The amount of water vapor present in the air vary from one place to another. The amount of water vapor present in the air at a given time is called humidity. When humidity becomes very high, it rains. Layers of Atmosphere Atmosphere is the blanket of air surrounding the earth. It consists of four main layers. Troposphere. The first layer of atmosphere is called troposphere. It is the layer that we live in. This layer is made up of gases we breathe every day. It extends up to 15 km above the Earth's surface. In this layer, winds blow, clouds build up, and weather changes take place. Stratosphere. It extends up to 35 km and lies above the troposphere. Stars shine in this layer. The ozone layer is situated in the upper part of this layer. This layer is very essential for the survival of human life because it does not allow harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun to enter Earth's atmosphere. Ionosphere 
Above the static field lies the mesosphere, followed by the thermosphere. The mesosphere and thermosphere are often referred together as ionosphere. This is the thickest layer. It possesses electrically charged particles that help radius work. Exosphere. It is the layer of atmosphere above the ionosphere and is very thin. Beyond this layer lies the space. All the layers of atmosphere are held by Earth's gravity. This force keeps our atmosphere at the Earth's right place. Properties of air. Take a balloon. Weigh it. Now, fill air inside it. You will see that the balloon inflates. Weigh it again. We can observe the difference in weight. An inflated balloon has more weight than a deflated one. This shows that air has weight. A deflated balloon occupies less space. The volume of an inflated balloon increases. This shows that air occupies space. On pushing air in a balloon, its size increases. On pushing more air into it, the balloon bursts. Why? Because the balloon could expand only up to certain limit. It bursts because the pressure of the air inside the balloon becomes more than that outside the balloon. This shows that air exerts pressure. Uses of air pressure Generally, we use a straw to suck up a cold drink. When we suck cold drink through the straw, air present in the straw is first removed and the liquid drunk into take its place. The air pressure in the bottle forces the cold drink to rise up in the straw. Water supports life. Water is as important as air for our survival. All living beings need water to live. Human beings use water for different purposes like drinking, cooking, bathing, etc. Impurity is present in water. On the basis of solubility, two types of impurity are found in water. Soluble impurities and soluble impurities. The substance impurities that get dissolved in water are called soluble impurities. The dissolved substances like salt and sugar are called solutes. Dissolved impurities, calcium and magnesium, affect hardness of water and alkalinity. Dissolved impurities, sodium, affect causes alkalinity. Dissolved impurities, iron, affects bad taste, red color. Dissolved impurities, manganese, affect make water black or brown. There are some substances which do not get dissolved in water. These substances impurities are called insoluble or suspended impurities. Suspended impurities microscopic organisms affect cause diseases. Suspended impurities solids like chalk and sand affect cause murkiness, darkness, removal of insoluble impurities sedimentation and decantation. Take a mixture of soil and water in a beaker. Keep the beaker undisturbed for some time. Impurities being heavier than water settle down at the bottom after some time. Now, clear water can be poured slowly into another beaker, leaving the impurities settle in the first beaker. Sedimentation is the process through which heavy particles and impurities present in the water settle at the bottom of containers due to the effect of gravity. Decantation is the process of separation of mixtures, carefully following a solution from a container and leaving sediments at the bottom of the container. Filtration In this method, impure water is made to pass through a filter paper. Filter paper does not allow impurities to pass through it. Only clear water gets collected after filtration. Removal of soluble impurities Evaporation Take some water in a beaker. Dissolve some sugar or salt in the water. Put the beaker on a spirit lamp. Allow it to boil until the entire water content of the beaker evaporates. After evaporation, some crystals can be seen lying in the beaker. These crystals are of sugar and salt. Thus, soluble substances can be removed from the water through evaporation. Purification of drinking water Drinking water or potable water is supplied for human consumption. 
Water purification is the process of removal of undesirable substances from raw, impure water to make it fit for human consumption. Different methods are followed for water purification. Boiling It is the simplest way of purifying water. It kills disease causing germs present in water. It is recommended to boil drinking water for a few minutes and cool it down before drinking it. Filtration Filtration is a popular water purification.